Dehydration of alcohols is a special case of 1-2 elimination. Let me show you what I mean. Tertiary alkyl halides undergo elimination by the e one mechanism. First, in a slow step, the leaving group leaves, and then in a much faster step, some base removes the proton adjacent to the carbocation to make the pi bond. When we use an alcohol, same structure, but hydroxyl in place of bromide, this reaction does not happen. There's also an E2 mechanism for 1-2 elimination. When treated with strong base, this tertiary bromide loses hydrogen bromide in one step. Proton abstracted, sigma electrons form a pi bond as the leaving group leaves. Concerted one-step reaction. With alcohols, this doesn't happen either. Both the E1 and the E2 mechanisms don't happen with alcohols. Why? Because hydroxide is a very poor leaving group. But there's a simple way to accomplish 1-2 elimination of alcohols. Transform that OH into a very good leaving group, OH2. Hydroxide is a very poor leaving group. Water is a very good leaving group. Take a look. Alcohols act as bases because they have a lone pair of electrons they can share with the proton. So when an alcohol is treated with a strong acid, concentrated sulfuric acid is common. It's readily protonated. Bisulfate is a byproduct. Now this molecule has a very good leaving group and an E1 reaction easily takes place. Loss of the leaving group to make the carbocation this carbocation rapidly loses the proton from the adjacent carbon to make the pi bond, just like a regular E1 reaction. It is a regular E1 reaction. The similarity to a regular E1 reaction is easily seen in the energy diagram. The E1 energy diagram has two humps, a high activation energy barrier for the first step, that's the rate determining step, to form a carbocation and then rapidly loss of proton to form the alkene. The acid-catalyzed dehydration by an E1 mechanism has three humps. It looks exactly like the one you're seeing here, except there's an earlier step. Now we see three activation energies. The first one is very low. The first step makes the protonated alcohol. And then we have the energy diagram of an E1 reaction. But primary alcohols can be dehydrated with concentrated acid, too. How does that work? We know that primary carbocations aren't formed. Well, primary alcohols, like the one I've shown here, undergo dehydration by an E2 reaction. Again, initial protonation is required to transform the hydroxide into a very good leaving group. Unshared pair of electrons forms a bond with this proton, as these electrons stay with bisulfate. Again, this is in concentrated sulfuric acid, and the byproduct is bisulfate. In the second step, which is the E2 elimination step, a proton is abstracted by bisulfate acting as a base. These sigma bonds form the pi bond as the water molecule leaves with a pair of electrons. Again, you see the similarity with an E2 reaction by looking at the energy diagram. The energy diagram of an E2 reaction is extremely simple. A single energy barrier, one step, no intermediate. In the dehydration of alcohols, we have an early protonation step that has a very low activation energy. Once that protonated alcohol is made, the energy diagram looks exactly like an E2 reaction. It is an E2 reaction. One more thing to tell you about these two mechanisms. In theory, they're reversible. And under different conditions, we see the exact opposite reaction happen. So I'll write a very small arrow here because in this case, the reaction goes in one direction. And this very small arrow here. Why does the reaction shift to the right to form alkene product? Well, notice that water is a byproduct. And in concentrated sulfuric acid, water is fully protonated. 
This removes one of the reactants from the equilibrium and shifts it fully to the right to form product. The same thing is true with the dehydration of a tertiary alcohol. In theory, this reaction is reversible, and so is this one, and so is this one. But again, water is a byproduct, and it's protonated by sulfuric acid to make the hydronium ion. Again, shifting the equilibrium to the right, favoring the alkene formation. So I've showed you a tertiary alcohol and a primary alcohol. Secondary alcohols dehydrate by a carbocation mechanism, the E1 reaction, but much more slowly, require more heat. So dehydration of alcohols is a 1-2 elimination that occurs only in the presence of strong acid. The secret is to convert a very bad leaving group into a very good leaving group. Then the alkene is formed by the standard E1 or E2 elimination mechanisms.